So this is the final bit of uh, thing. I've got two bolts holding this down, and if I zero this outer rim, I've got about minus six to zero, which is a difference of about six thousandths of an inch, which is perfect. It's enough for the oil to get around the thrust braces, and it's not slack enough that the shaft will wobble out of position and wear. So that's the ideal um, end. So I've, uh, what I did is I took out the shim, which is actually five thou. Um, you see here in inches. I took out this five thou. And the way that I did it is I levered this um, end race out using a, a 22 mil uh, spanner. So you put this in and lever and you can pull out the outer race which is stuck in the end of the crankcase and underneath that is these shims so by successively adjusting the shims until you've calculated you'll have between five and ten thou on this shaft um, you can then finally put down with uh, the Heilemar sealant both sides of the castings not the gasket the castings because you don't want uh, too much glue and then bolt it down, double check, that was the double check, it's perfect and we're good. Now finally, when you've done all that you can put down your stainless steel bush we'll get a new one, these are precision made little bit of grease you want on here So a little bit of grease, drop that down, Let's turn it as it goes and now you've got a perfect seal on there. And then you have your wood rough key which you tap in and then after your, after your wood rough key you then slide and tap on, I use a socket to drive this on, make sure the inside is clean, not with paint or rust, use a Dremel to, to polish that out, otherwise it can be really stiff, and use a puller to get it off. Um, the other thing is, that face there needs to be really flat and clean, and you put a bit of Hylomar sealant on this, otherwise the oil could potentially leak through, so it's nice to have that a nice oil tight fit on this side, as well as assuming it's on the other side. Um, and when you've done that, You've then got your lock washer and your nut and the way to torque up the nut is to put a, a big screwdriver or crowbar between the non-threaded bits of these nuts and you can chock it and turn it with a 24mm socket and I, I use uh, about 18 inch leverage as much as I can do so that's probably about uh, 60 foot pounds on that nut, it's got a fine thread anyway and uh, as long as that's gone down smoothly that will be reliable and that's job done then afterwards I suggest you fit your impeller housing and gasket and as you know if you haven't already got it assembled what you do is you have a, a gasket on here and then you have your back plate with the uh, the, the chamfered bit on the underside usually. One of these sides is flatter, goes at the bottom. Um, Hylomar both sides. If this is rusty, cut a thicker piece of paper for the gasket. This is not a fussy side and uh, that will seal it nicely. Then you put your wood rough key in. Then you put your precision 15 thou gasket which I supply. Um, and then the impeller slides on. And finally more Hylomar around the outside of the housing which you've polished and cleaned and then as you put it on turn it clockwise so the blades line up with the way they're going to rotate so in about a quarter of a turn you can just drive it on like this it comes down the gasket shouldn't have moved because the impeller hasn't that's touching it and then you put your three bolts so that's your procedure for that and just hand tight make sure if you've got dodgy threads these are perfect like this engine and all my ones. If you've got bad threads here, it can be a disaster. So you need to drill them out and helicoil them if you haven't done so already. These ones are perfect, and I've also made sure 
that I've cleaned out with a drill down to the bottom of the threads and I've cleaned up the threads and primed and sprayed them as well. When you put the bolts in you might want to put a little bit of grease on but not too much because you get a sort of hydraulic effect of, um, uh, of it lacking a piston it won't go in. So just a little bit of oil perhaps. Anyway that's it, that's how you do your gearbox fitting for a VIA 712. If you've got a, a 7 it's easier to get the um, exhaust off like I have but you're probably going to need to change your top hose. You can reuse this gasket with exhaust cement or Hylamar um, but uh, you can actually get this off and on the 7 I think 12 as well but it's difficult to get at these two bolts and as it comes off and you disengage the dog you've then got to twist the box at a funny angle which means you didn't have to take this exhaust off but it's a little bit more awkward to do this job so um, I have all the tools and facilities to redo cylinders but I know the original al aluminium via 12 exhaust are best left alone if they haven't been touched so if you're changing the gearbox on the via 12 I'd say leave the exhaust on see if you can get it off and on without damaging the, taking the exhaust because once you break the seal on a 12 usually a lot of the aluminium falls out of the exhaust and you have all sorts of filling and drilling and bushing and stuff job but there you go um, I'm Nick from VireEngines.com any questions go to the website and ask and uh, I'm always willing to support customers with what are they doing because I appreciate working on a boat is sometimes very difficult and stressful and I'm here to help. Thank you for watching.